Hello everyone, welcome to Politics Today live on Channels Television. We're live in our Abuja studio. I'm Shonwa Kimale. Welcome to the program, everyone. Tonight, before we get you into what uh, the conversation from yesterday, we, we'll pick it up from there. But don't forget that the most important part of this whole matter is the import, the implication for not only the northern region of the country, but also for the rest of the country. So what the northern leaders, the governors, and the traditional rulers discussed yesterday as against what the southern counterpart discussed in Enugu, all of those, we unpack it for you tonight. We have a robust conversation right here. Stay with me, everyone. But let's first tell you what INX says it is doing ahead of the November the 7th, uh, November the 6th governorship election in Anambra State. The Electoral Commission has said that it will publish the final list of candidates for the election on the 7th of October 2021. The commission says there is an appreciable progress in fixing the facilities of the commission destroyed during the 23rd of May 2021 attack. The burnt stores have been rebuilt according to INEC and ready to receive materials while the repairs of the collation center and other affected facilities are almost completed. The commission went further to state that it will publish the official register of voters and the final list of nominated candidates for the election on the 7th of October 2021. The permanent voter cards, that is, that is the PVCs, of the new registrants will be ready for collection on or shortly after the 7th of October. There's some of the latest information coming from the electoral umpire as far as the Nambra governorship election is concerned. We have some other stories for you on our political roundup. The Federal High Court has fixed October the 14th for the rearrangement of the former National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Olisa Metu, over an alleged 400 million naira fraud. The date was fixed following the absence of the new trial judge, Justice Obiore Guatu, in court. Mr. Metu's retrial could not proceed despite his presence and all the parties involved in court. The House of Representatives has mandated its Committee on Youth Development to investigate the alleged insertion of the advice for payment of ransom into the National Youth Service Corps pamphlet containing security tips. The matter was raised by the minority leader, Mr. Ndidi Lumelu, who expressed concern that the inclusion of the said section shows a complete collapse in the security architecture of the country. The Cross River State Governor, Professor Ben Ayade, has described free and fair elections as a catalyst for national unity and an antidote against voter apathy. Speaking at the conference hall of the Governor's Office, Calabar, while playing host to the new Crossover State Resident Electoral Commissioner, Dr. Cyril Amoregwe, the Governor urged the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to be wary of desperate lobbyists and politicians and not allow itself to be compromised. And the Nigerian Civil Society organization called Budget is recommending that states across Nigeria should prioritize production and expansion of their revenue base in order to recover from the economic shocks of the COVID-19 pandemic. Speaking at the official presentation of the 2021 state's fiscal performance report in Abuja, budget lists Lagos, Rivers, Anambra, Eboy, and Cross River states as the leading states with the ability to meet their annual operating expenses using their internally generated revenue, IGR. Much everyone for staying with us right here on the program. Yesterday, the decision and statements of the governors and traditional rulers from the northern region of the country after their meeting in Kaduna is still generating reactions from across the land. The import of their stance and the implication gets us talking again. Uh, if you were able to watch the program or if you are not able, let me remind you of some of the things that they said. Uh, they spoke about the issue of the VAT. Um, they spoke, uh, they gave their stance on the power rotation matter, the review of the region's security architecture, fight against banditry, the constitutionality of the power shift and 2023 uh, rotation of the presidency, and the court determination of the VAT collection debate. Those are some of the issues that they raised uh, yesterday. And it was almost uh, uh, a direct... Uh, opposite of what their counterpart in the Southern Governors Forum uh, gave when they met first in Lagos, then in, uh, first in Asaba, 
then in Lagos before their last meeting in Enugu. But tonight, what everyone in this country needs to understand is cohesion, national cohesion is very critical. Also, the development of this country is very critical. Amongst several other issues that we bring to the table when we discuss politics and what politicians are saying. So tonight, we want to unpack all of these issues for you to get the implications and the import of what was said and unsaid yesterday. So I have joining me tonight um, a former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Mr. Joseph Daudu, senior advocate of Nigeria. He joins us uh, from Abuja out of the studio. And here in the studio, <coughs> excuse me, I have Professor Jide Ofo Adibe, a professor of political science and international relations right here with me. And also another professor, Professor Abubakar Suleiman, is a director general of the National Institute of Legislative and Democratic Studies. So when I told you it's going to be robust, I meant what I said. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming. Thank you. Let me begin with the former president of the NBA, Mr. Daudu. Thank you so much, Mr. Joseph Daudu. It's good to see you. Give us a sense uh, of what you make, first and foremost, the leg legal issues that the governors raised, first and foremost, on the issue of the VAT. What can you tell us as your position? As this has created a lot of um, debate in the land, and governors and leaders at that level, they're also having different views as to where to go, how to go about it. What's your position? I don't know if Mr. Daudu can hear us, but uh, if he can, let, let our engineers will work on getting to hear him properly. Let me come to, uh, to the studio here. Uh, let me begin with Professor Fadibe. Uh, give us a sense of that VAT matter. <laughs> it's been this in the, in the Abbasanger era, yeah. we saw state governments go head to head yeah, with yeah. federal government. I'm not state. sure in our democracy in, mm -hmm. in the last 20 years, I'm not sure I've, you were a minister under the Abbasanger <laughs> era. So I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I've seen such a fierce and uh, contestation between the federal government and the state government. We've seen that kind of thing happen again. Uh, we've seen the VAT matter. We've also seen the, the issue of the stamp duty. That's another issue that the state governments are taking up. But what's your, what, what's your view on what is happening? Yeah, thank you. I wouldn't actually want to see this VAT matter in isolation of the reasons why the southern governors decided to close ranks and make certain demands, including on power shift to the south and including on banning open grazing. You have to see it in the context of the fact that suddenly legitimacy was flowing away from the governors down to non-state actors. And as legitimacy flew away, you know, and non-state actors like Anna Amdekana and the Sunday World became the darling of the people, there was a need for this group of people to try to reclaim that legitimacy back by articulating those grievances that the non-state actors are trying to champion. So whether you're talking about state legislature, I mean, uh, whether you're talking about uh, power rotation back to the south or VAT, they are all part of the idea that there was a need for a group to, you know, uh, try to articulate some grievances. So there is a pressure on the governors to reclaim their legitimacy back. There is also a pressure on the northern governors. In the northern governors, the belief is that in Nigeria's peculiar mode of, you know, dispensing privileges, the South controls the economy, and the North need the political power as a lever. So it's also a response. You may not know it, but it's kind of a response to the feelings from the street. So they have to articulate that one. So whether you're talking about VAT, that's going to the area of physical federalism, and uh, whether you're talking about any other thing. Under Basanji, you are right. Tinubu fought it. And they even went to the Supreme Court. And I think they lost because they said uh, FIRS was the agent of the government and ought to have been sued, not the government itself. And I think then Wike was able to capitalize on that by suing the FIRS. But we'll see. The good thing about this thing is that we are unbottling. All those bottled up feelings mm. are being put in the open. And this is pure brinksmanship where you now see who will blink first. In the end... In the end, the good thing about this is being done by the governors, traditional leaders. They are too well off 
that they cannot threaten the system. Maybe the it <laughs> powers are being <laughs> at, no, no, at that are level. So established. Yeah. I will be very much concerned if this is happening from non-state actors. Hmm. So in the end, it's going to be a political solution. Do you agree with Prof? <laughs> I know uh, uh, <laughs> Professor Suleiman <laughs> is a Yoruba man from Kwara, from the North Central. <laughs> Sometimes it could be very confusing. <laughs> and that's one thing about Nigeria. <clears throat> you see a Yoruba man from the North. You see, uh, I mean, Nigeria is so diverse that, look, it's, sometimes I think that diversity is some s s sort of strength. Mm -hmm. um, you have lived within that complexities. Mm -hmm. This is another complexity on our hands. Prof, what's your take? Thank you very much. I think it's quite unfortunate at times when you, when you find ourselves in, you know, Yoruba from the north. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A Yoruba Muslim from the north. Mm -hmm. Even when you're even talking about rotation of mm -hmm. presidency, mm -hmm. we don't know where they are going to place us. <laughs> just, to, <laughs> just to give back to you. But quite frankly, from uh, what my colleague just said, the, the ongoing you know, contestation borders on what has been happening since 1960. You know, the, the, the quest for setting regional hegemony, especially the quest for having a true federalism. You can't, have, you can't surrender your liberty and your sovereignty to a federation called Nigeria without giving onto the various regions or states of the, what you call federation units some kind of liberty and some kind of sovereignty to lay claim on some certain things, especially those that are borders on fiscal federalism. Mm. I think it's an ongoing debate. Yeah. It's an ongoing conversation. Nothing has really changed. You may have different political parties, PDP, APC, but when it comes to the issue of you know, who control resources? Who garner resources? Who's making the resources? This issue of, you know, rivalry, competition, power politics, you know, comes up again. So I've not seen anything different from what has been happening since, Com since the competition first Competition might not be a bad thing because in the, in the 60s, uh, I mean, even before the 60s, there is a, it's a healthy competition between the regions in terms of economy. I mean, you can take their takeaways from the north mm. where they, are, they have their strength in the economy. Mm -hmm. They are takeaways from the south where they have their strength in the economy. And there is a, a, a healthy... In fact, some people will learn from the other is region. Not, but is, this competition... Is, 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 a non, is an ongoing thing. And I want to believe it's going to fizzle out as, as, we, as we progress you know, towards 2023. Really? Yeah. Do you think 2023 is at, in, is at the heart of this? It's, it's, it's part of it. And I like it or not. That's why when you talk of the issue of rotation, presidency, which one produces... The presidency. You have PDP in the south. You have APC in the south. We have them, you know, across your political zone. But now the question is: forget about our platform. Now, people are not talking about their language, their tribes, their ethnicity, their religion. It is our time to get this thing. Let's come together, regardless of our party affiliation. So it's all about 2023. Mm. And as we are moving on, you begin to wonder: okay, Lagos and and rivers, <laughs> where have they come together? Where are the Tulumbus and Wiki coming together? Where is Samuel and Wiki coming together? It's all about the same thing. The South is trying to lay claim to it that is their turn. Whether it's the Wiki of a PDP or the Samuel of, 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 of APC. Do you agree, Professor? Do you you see, identities that are perceived to be under threat are the ones most vociferously defended. So what you have to understand in what is playing out is about identity construction. You look at Autumn, Samuel Autumn, who has been a, a vehement critique of Buhari. They come together now under one north. So you look at the people we call the Igbo faction and the Yoruba faction of the internet warriors who will be quarreling on who owns Lagos or who has better houses. They close the rank. That doesn't mean it's, well, that's why we say identity has state, uh, time and state dimensions. After a while, you still move back and say, oh, you're Yoruba, you're Igbo. But what I'm trying to say is, what is happening now is, reminds one of what happened just before Abiola became president. There was this feeling in the South that, you know, the North dominated the political machine through the military. So whether, when it was time for Muslim, Muslim, people didn't want, they just wanted a shift. And if they have to make a shift, the people from the north, you have to also see it from two sides. They have this thing that there's a pressure from the street also that says, look, they have the economy. If you give them political power, which we use as a lever, they will use this political power to consolidate their hegemony on the economy and use it to pulverize us. 
So that becomes a fear thing. So if you are able, therefore, to say, no, it's not going to shift. You're also speaking the, uh, language, speaking the language of the masses. All right. And by so doing, preventing your legitimacy from flowing away. One of the things that one thought had brought the governors together or what there is a major issue in the north, which is a security matter in the north central, in the northwest, is the issue of banditry. And the solution to it, you find three states in the north that are having to shut down telecoms uh, services at, at some point. This is a major issue uh, causing a big threat to the economy, to the peace of those states. Not like other regions of the country don't have their own share of uh, these issues. But the question is that the unit called the governors, the traditional rulers, that synergy has been lost between uh, the elected and the, the, the traditional institutions. But what do you make of that synergy that we saw in Kaduna and what we continue to see about the issue of policing and the security architecture that should be in place in the country in fixing some of these major security issues? You see, uh, when it comes to the issue of security, as it relates to the country or to the northern part of the country, I'm not all that happy that uh, our leaders in the north or in the south, they tend to differ on how to address the issue. Be it a southerner or a northerner, be it Muslims or Christians, we are all confronted with this menace of insecurity. And in addressing security, we should not be seen to have divergent opinion or views on how to surmount the challenges. I'm one, I'm of opinion that uh, the northern part of the country, we have not done so much. We do respect. What do you mean by that? Thank you very much. The impact or the import of insurgency, kidnapping, banditry, on all this kind of insecurity is more vehement, more faith in the north. Yeah. Casualty, victims, children taken out of school, students taken out of school, is more pronounced in the northern part of the country. The question is, and I keep on asking the questions, the bandits, the kidnappers, the insurgents, they ride on vehicles, on motorcycles, in hundreds. Some people supply weapons fuel to them. They live in villages and rural areas. And the question we keep on asking, are you now saying that in this rural area that they are, you know, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are operating, people do not see them. They are not being seen by people. And look, could you see any remote area in the north, you don't find one Magaji, one chief, one ruler here and there. Are you now saying they are not aware they reside there? Look, we are, we are talking of thousands, not even hundreds. What has broken down? Because something must have, I mean, things were not like this. There, there seems some, to be some uh, kind of uh, 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 cohesion, some kind of organization within the local setup, uh, as far as we know. Before, that before, before we talk about what has broken down at the level of institutions, institutional breakdown, let's look at what has, breakdown, what has broken down in the areas of value system. You understand? We have a value system. Some of these kidnappers and bandits, they, they, they belong to the, 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 the flank of youth. They are maybe 20 something and something years of old. When we, are, we are, when we are in the university in the olden days, we are going to AB, for instance, you go to Kado where you are taking your meal in the restaurant. You see all these boys, the Ghana around you. When you close your eyes to want to pray as a Muslim or as a Christian, you carry your food and go. The point, yeah. Yeah, the point I'm making... This was at, in the 70s. In the 70s. The point I'm making is those children of yesterday that were not taken care of, okay. that were not well brought up, that were not being given serious education, they were the ones that grew up to be the so-called kidnappers and bandits. Mm -hmm. Some of the traditional rulers and you know, village elders, they know them. Nobody is coming with information. The, 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 the security agencies, the police, the military, they are not angels, they are not God. It's only when you provide information to them that they can make some information and to apprehend those you know, culprits. The value system in the north, in the country, has broken down. The family unit in the country has broken down. The parents, they are not doing what they should do. The malams, the, 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 the pastor, the people that need to impact value, 
want to have children, they are not at work. There, there, there is something important that you just yeah. raised. You said in the 70s, this uh, uh, pilfering, yeah. because of petty uh, uh, ro ro robbery mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Took, took place. And yeah. you make reference that it's the import of what happened then that we're saying those children that were not taken care of. Yeah. But at the moment, the statistics show that over 200 million children are out of school into drugs in Nigeria. These are some of the things that are being said and being uh, raised over. And in the northern region of the country, these numbers are huge. Are the family, are we, are the family units, what are we doing? At the time they were getting Ghana Moju, you understand, know getting themselves in this kind of attitude and habits. What were the role of parents? What were the role of traditional rulers? What are the role of the malams? Even when government come with schools, nomadic schools, and imaginary schools, to get upscale all these standards, what have we done as people? Government could only provide schools. They have done their own. But individual, community leader, we have a role to play. We are not playing that role in the North. Prof. And I'm saying, yeah. Yeah. our traditional rulers, the elite in the North, we have a role to play. We are the most... Is it the failure of the elite? It's the failure of the elite, of course. You are, do you agree, Professor Adibe? Um, let me say this. I see a divorce between the values of the elders who always think of yesterday's the good olden days and the young people. So if you go to any part of this country, people expect that the elders are able to control the young people. So I, I read the other day somebody saying, oh, Ohaneze should be able to rein in uh, IPOB. And, uh, do you assume wrongly that these people have the capacity to control them? If all the traditional rulers and northern elders and all that they were able to do, talk to Boka, they are young people. Why were they not able to talk to them? So there is a, a little bit of cultural divorce between this older generation and the younger people. He was, we, there is a multivariate factors. Part of them he mentioned about, but it's not only peculiar to the north. In the, in the southeast, for example, you see some things that were not there. There's something we used to call the Eba boy system, where you go and do apprenticeship. After six, seven years, your master will settle you. People are not interested anymore because you can go to the internet and you find something you can hawk, you can sell something now. You know, seven years is just too long to wait and serve anybody when you can become rich. So things are evolving in part because of, you know, globalization, in part because of new forms of communication. So what we also need to do is instead of bemoaning or thinking about the good old days because culture is not static, we also have to think of how do we capture the imagination of the young people now? What do they need? Well, Professor Adibi, are the leaders in the North, did they address, are they addressing the matter headlong? What the solutions they are bringing to the table, to the table in your own view, mm. are those enough to rescue or to arrest the situation? I would like to talk about generally, every part of the country has its own peculiar challenge. So while maybe people who hide under religion in the north, in the south is maybe it will be under micronationalism. In other places, it about religion. I mean, it might be about the ethnicity and all that. So we have, you can say, the problems in this country they reflect the federal character, religious, ethnic regionalism and all this. How do we do it? And I agree, for example, there's a need. That's why we will talk about this decentralization of power. And I'm happy about this conversation that is going on with VAT. I believe something will give in police so that it becomes easier for people, for those in authority to have the power to be able, again, to set up proper reward and punishment systems for people. I don't think, in my own opinion, that yes, it played a role. But if the fact that uh, people were not given opportunity, then there are so many people across the country that we also didn't have opportunity. Not all of them resorted to banditry. So there's also something like cultural aspect. If you go to what is happening in the Southeast in a, or Southwest with cultism and the rest of them. So we have our own peculiar challenges. Instead of, uh, I think we need now to be able to map our strategies that are peculiar to our own you know, uh, challenges rather than using one medicine to, feel, to solve all the problems at the same time. The, the threats are multifaceted. Yeah. Um, I spoke with two governors of the North recently, and uh, for example, the, the governor of Katsina said, talked about how 
<coughs> lockers give information to these bandits yeah. and the reason why they are to shut out uh, communication so that they can frustrate that effort mm. in trying to communicate and for for them as far as they're concerned it's working i mean they have to go through that uh, extreme measure and this, I mean, the government clearly said that, that, look, these are people from the state. They are not strangers to the land. They know the territory, and they are working with people who have infiltrated the system. The issue mm. is a very big one. But we'll take a break, everyone. Yeah. When we come back, the conversation continues. Mr. Joseph Daudu, I understand now we can hear him, and he can hear us. But when we come back from the break, we'll get to hear his views on some of these major issues. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us right here on the program. We have three gentlemen uh, with a lot of wisdom. They're sharing their views on the import and the implications of what the governors of the northern region said yesterday. There are a lot of issues that have uh, generated debates from yesterday, reactions, multiple reactions from yesterday. Uh, tonight, we've been speaking with Professor Abubakar Sulaiman. He's the Director General of the Nigerian Institute of Legislative Studies. And... Uh, Professor Judy Ofoa Dibe is a professor of political science and international studies. And uh, we have the former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Mr. Joseph Daudu SN, is uh, out of the studio, uh, but he's with us on the program. Thank you so much, gentlemen. If you can hear me now, Mr. Daudu, I can see you. Um, and not will suffice to know that you can hear me. Uh, but uh, the same question I've been itching to, 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 uh, to, to hear from you over, uh, the question of the VAT, the legal matter, is a big issue. As a senior lawyer, where do you stand on this matter? What's your view on the contestation between the federal government and some of these state governments? I think it's about time that we had the last on the matter. It's uh, a matter that is uh, quite ripe. A matter that is uh, quite ripe. A matter that is uh, quite ripe. Matter that is, uh, quite ripe. So that uh, the VAT issue is coming at the appropriate time, yes. and it, it is a tax. It is really a tax that is a consumption tax, and on the face of it, clearly it should be tax left for the states to determine. I did listen to the northern governor say that uh, the southern governors misunderstood the law on the subject part. I'm afraid uh, it is they that misunderstood it. Uh, they think uh, VAT is a one-point tax. It is a consumption tax that for every product you buy and consume, at the point of purchase, you pay the tax. So if it goes from one seller to ten, and each person resells it, at that point of sale, it is the only kind of tax that at each point of consumption that you, you pay the VAT on it. So their misconception is that it's a one-off tax. No. Once you consume, you pay. If you take it to another state and resell, you pay VAT there too. So uh, ordinarily, such kind of uh, taxes are state taxes. But the matter is before the Supreme Court. To resolve it. But what's your position on the fears of the northern governors? As you said yesterday, that there is a possibility of multiple taxation in the area of the collection of VAT. Should every state's government be the ones to collect the VAT? Oh, no, there cannot be multiple ta taxation. And let me give you an example. You bring in a laptop to Lagos, and at Alaba market it is sold. 500 is sold to a retailer. 500 is sold to a wholesaler. After that, these are taken to different state capitals and sold. Wherever they are sold, they get VAT is paid. So the nature of VAT is that at every point of sale, VAT is deducted. And it then goes to the credit of the state where it is paid for and consumed. If the final consumer does not resell, 
the matter ends there. But the truth is that some states are more economically buoyant than others. And for states that have a heavy economic activity, like Lagos, Kano, uh, Rivers, uh, Abia, Anambra, for, to cite a few examples, those states, because they sell goods that are consumed, are bound to generate much more uh, VAT. The case is that the VAT should be consumed by them alone. This is because they do have environmental issues that come from the consumption of those items. If you take uh, uh, Lagos, for example, it will, because of the population it harbors, it needs to build drainages. The drainages are going to be in trillion, trillions of uh, naira. These are the taxes, if given to them in the appropriate quantity, will help create a better mega city for Lagos. But you cannot be depending on handouts from the federal government when commodities are sold in Lagos and you are unable to benefit from that. Now, where the northern governors get it wrong is that with all the things that are sold in Lagos, when you carry some of the items and go to Katsina to resell, at the point of resale, VAT again is charged. Because you know the cost at the point of sale is not going to be the same at the point of reselling. So VAT is also chargeable as soon as it changes hands. So the northern governors are not correct. They know truly that what is an issue is the fact that there, are, there is less economic activity happening in Jigawa or Yobe State than uh, happening in Rivers or Lagos. But however, is it fair to take the resources of Lagos and give to other states? The answer lies in every state developing its own economic base. This is called what they call uh, dire power or feeding bottle uh, 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 economics. So long as other states are not allowed to develop and to extract their own resources, they will continue to look across the border and see who can give them handouts. We should be tired of this. What is important at this point in time is if you allow a state like Jiga to develop its agricultural potentials, have greenhouses, sell organic foods, it will make as much money as other states in the southern states are, are, are making. But when you get over dependent on resources from the federal government, going to Abuja every month to collect yes. money, yes. you are going to expect yes. that other people's VAT will be given to you, you then put yourself in a situation where there is serious fear in your mind whenever it is said that these resources will stop. But there is no state in this country that is not blessed. And I would rather, as a northerner, want the northern governors to develop their own resources. It may take five, eight years. In those days, in Bauchi, there used to be a meat canning factory. Meat was exported from Bauchi out of the country. All these industries have died. The present governors, the present leaders, instead of thinking about who is going to be president in 2023, or whether that person should come from the north, to first resurrect all the industries that made the north a very great place, instead of coming now to begin to heat up the polity by saying, oh, there will be no rotation, there will be rotation. That really is not the matter. The issue, heart of the matter is that we must look for the Nigeria. Nigeria. I hate to hear People talk in terms of regional, ethnic, cultural, or religious biases to search for a leader that is expected to promote the culture of unity and integration in this country. The truth really is that a lot of people are used to the comfort of being uh, pampered as a chosen or select group. Now. We are in a situation, and all these things are interwoven. We are in a situation where in the eight years, there has been a clear bias 
in the nature of appointments, in the nature of uh, preferments, in respect of a certain or a clear group of people. Naturally, those people will not want that uh, uh, porridge to be taken away from them or that cake to be taken away, however unfair. But however, that is not the Nigeria that we want. The Nigeria we want is where everyone is seen, whether from Calabar, whether from Kebi, whether from Borno, whether from uh, uh, Ijebudi, to be seen first and foremost as a Nigerian. Now, when we see each other as Nigeria, as a Nigerian, then we can pilot the affairs of this country to such an extent that uh, we will get the best out of it. But a lot of people now assume that, well, because I am from so 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 place, because I speak this language, because I bear this name, that I am superior to other people who come from other places. That will not help us. Temporarily, it may appear to be helpful. But as we go on, we will find out that the Constitution that promotes equity, justice, and fairness, if not adhered to, and equity, justice, and fairness can only play out when you make sure that everybody has a fair opportunity of uh, leading this country. Like Professor Suleiman said, where does he stand? He's a Yoruba Muslim from the north. If it is even zoned to the north, will he be considered? Will they not tell him at the end of the day, even if he's a front runner for presidency, that go back to your brothers in the southwest? Where do I stand? I want to be president. But will the issue not be where you come from? The issue really is that we should go for competence. We should go for the best material. But we are not at that point yet. The point where we are in is that one party, one group, has had it for six to eight years. A for sure, right, automatically it should move to the other group so that we create a sense of balance. A lot of people say they did not enjoy Prado, uh, when the group yeah, yeah, Yes? Yeah, yeah, Mr. Madu, I wanna before we even come to uh what you have just entered into, uh the power sharing matter, I wanted to get your final view, yeah. uh, uh I mean uh, final question to you on the issue of the VAT. For anyone to say we want to go to yeah, the Supreme yeah, Court yeah, for clarification or interpretation of the stance yeah. of the law. In that, in a particular matter, it then means that there might be no precedence in the in the case, or there might be some confusion or lacuna. But the question is, how do we resolve it? Is it an, an amendment? After the Supreme Court clarifies this matter, where do we go? You now, first of all, we must resolve the legal issue first, and the issue, legal issues appears to me clear, especially as we hear that government itself is seeking an amendment, which, well, to use a legal term, uh, stops them or prevents them from contending the contrary, that they have powers to take VAT. So I think that is a settled matter legally, but we leave that for the courts to do it. However, with our politicians, with the country, nothing is beyond negotiation. So long as negotiation is accompanied with fairness, with equity, with decency, with respect. Everybody can give a little of what he's supposed to get so that his brother is comfortable until he can develop his own. So I agree with you, there must be a political solution, yeah. but political solution depends yeah, okay. on the posture and the respect with which the issue is approached. To approach people rudely and tell them they are second-class citizens, they would say, okay, let us battle this thing to the end. So I think that... Yeah, because that, that's exactly the point, I mean, the argument about oh, whether or not VAT is expressly stated in terms of collection in our uh, community of laws and whether or not these things are clarified for everyone to know, it would probably have caused some of these problems and this disagreement that we are seeing. And those are some of the issues that, I've, uh, that I was trying uh, to, uh, to bring up with you for, for, yeah, your, for clarity from you. But uh, in essence, uh, for those who have also debated that the, the only reason that we are the only uh, the possibility of, of solution that we can see that is reasonable is a political one. 
Because if this drag on for too long, it will hurt the economy. But how will this political solution happen? No, this political solution cannot happen until there is a legal uh, imprimatur on the matter. It is only after you have a legal position clearly stated, which I think is clear, because even government has admitted by writing to the National Assembly for an insertion in the exclusive legislative list. So on that basis, if they throw in the towel at this stage and say, look, let's come to where we normally come to and discuss this issue. We give you some parts. You collect uh, uh, sales and other forms of taxes, and then we boost up the sharing formula. Perhaps uh, some people will be assuaged by that. But to say we will take it and nothing will happen, they don't. Things like that don't happen in this in this country. I'll, I'll so take you again to where you, you touched on, uh, and I wanted to, this controversy also, for us to talk about this, since the governors are, uh, they, they are discussing and they are talking about this. So the Constitution has said the composition of the government of the Federation or any of its agencies and the conduct of this affair shall be carried out in such a manner as to reflect the federal character of Nigeria expressly stated in the constitution uh, lawyers have also argued that well it might be an unwritten rule in nigeria's politics the issue of rotation but the governors of the north have specifically said it is unconstitutional what is your view first of all they do not know the meaning of what unconstitutional means when you say something is unconstitutional it means that one provision of the law exists, and when you compare it to a direct provision of the Constitution, it goes opposite to it. When the Constitution is silent on whether there should be rotation or not, and it encourages federal character, and it encourages fairness, and it encourages justice and equity, rotation cannot be unconstitutional. It is merely an unwritten rule that is in sync with the Constitution. So it is they that do not understand or know the meaning of the word unconstitutional. It is not unconstitutional. But, but give us a linkage now. When you say it's an unwritten rule, and you say, yes, it's linked to the Constitution, give us a linkage. How does it connect? The linkage is that in the direct principles and, uh, of state policy, that is chapter 2, one of the functions of the, of, of, the, of, of, the, of, of the state is to promote justice, equity, and fairness. Now, if you say it is one side's birthright to produce the president ad infinitum, are you keeping the charter of fairness, justice, and equity that is entrenched in the Constitution? Every Nigerian for wherever he comes from, should be able to aspire to lead this country if he has the wherewithal and the qualities to lead it. However, the point we are in, to create a balance, not to heat up the polity, there has been this rule that when you touch it for eight years or four years, the other side takes it and they see what they can do. Now, because we are diverse and we should not pretend that we are not diverse. Because we are diverse, there must therefore be a way of finding out whose report card is more in the interest of the Nigerian uh, project than the other. Now, you have a report card that shows the whole place is filled up with banditry, kidnapping, where you can't see the infrastructure, loans have been taken in such a way as to mortgage generations of uh, Nigerians, and the same group now comes up to say, we want to rule ad infinitum. Who will agree? Let us give it to another person to try. Perhaps when they try, we'll be able to see whether they can make a difference. So the case for me, for non-rotation, collapses on the basis of uh, report and report card and uh, track record of who is campaigning that we should be allowed to govern. I don't think if you have failed... You should become the class monitor of the next class because you should not be promoted.
<laughs> That's an interesting analogy. But uh, because we're going to wrap up now, I promise our viewers that we're going to do a contrast to look at what the governors have said from the different flanks. Uh, first and foremost, we hear just a short soundbite of what Governor Akiridolu said. And then we'll hear what Governor okay. Simon Lalong said also. And then we'll come back and conclude with the professors in the studio. Whether or not it is the constitutional part or the political part that will win in this matter. It's a debate between the governors from the different region of the country. Take a listen to Governor Akiridolu first and foremost. We are created its other position that the next president of Nigeria must come from the southern part of Nigeria in line with policies of equity, justice, and fairness. The meeting expressed satisfaction with the rate at which the states in the southern Nigeria are enacting or amending the anti-open grazing laws, which align with the uniform template an aspiration of southern governors and encourage the states that are yet to enact the law to do so expeditiously. The meeting resolved to support the position that the collection of VAT falls within the powers of the states. The meeting expressed satisfaction with the handling of issues around the PIA, Petroleum Industry Act. So that's the governor of uh, Ondo State and the chair of the Southern Governors Forum. So you heard, he said, he must come to the start, the rotation. Take a listen to how the Northern Governors responded to that. That some Northern State Governors had earlier expressed views for a power shift to any three geopolitical zones in the South with a view to promoting unity and peace in the nation. Notwithstanding their comments, the forum unanimously condemned the statement by the Southern Governors Forum that the presidency must go to the South. The statement is quite contradictory with the provision of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended that the elected president shall A, score the majority vote, B, score at least 25% of the votes cast in two third states of the Federation. That is for you, wherever you may be watching, to have the contrast. So I'll allow my guests to wrap up in 30 seconds or so. So let me start with you. You've seen the contrast. It must come to the South. And they said, no, that cannot happen. The, the governors of the North had responded to the, their colleagues in the South. Your final word. Their position reflects only the position of the major ethnic group in this country. They're just talking about the major ethnic group in this country. They're not talking about the North Central. They're not talking about the minorities in the country. For instance, we talk, let it go to the north. Are we talking about North Central? Are we talking about Middle Belt? Yeah? I don't think so. The point I'm making here is that some of this position by either the north or the south is just a position, you know, to advance the interests of the major ethnic group within those, you know, Geopolitical, political zone. And so I, I will have prevailed. As a man, minority I'm, in the I'm, north, I'm, you are not happy. I'm not, I'm, I'm not being captured. <laughs> I'm not being captured. So <laughs> that, that is the rotation north. Where in the north? That's right, the question. Where in the north? <laughs> first, I, didn't know I think uh, the first thing for us to know is that it is wrong to assume that no bargaining. This is bargaining that is happening. It's called brinksmanship. And uh, if you remember John Foster Dulles, who was Secretary of State to Eisenhower, 53 to 56, he said it's an art. And the strategy is to make sure, he said, pushing it to the verge without going to war is the art. So they are bargaining. This is just bag political bargaining that is taking place ahead, right? ahead of 2023. So wow. it's bargaining. Another thing, it is wrong of the northern, northern political, uh, northern government. It's not true. In a democracy, there's no democracy anywhere that is unfettered. Where you have, if it's unfettered, then you have what they call majority tyranny. That's why in every democratic system, you have things like a bill of rights, human rights, mm -hmm. term limits, Things that will make sure to prevent what they call majority tyranny or mob rule. <laughs> Interesting. We'll get a final 30 seconds uh, word from uh, 
and the former president of the NBA, Mr. Joseph Dowdu. Your final word. You've heard the contrast. What is uh, your parting word on this? Yes, I heard that. But uh, uh, once again, I will also maintain that uh, even though there is uh, still some bargaining to be done, but the analogy or the, the, the authority relied on by the, the northern governors as to the constitution does not answer the question. We are saying before the population votes, who has the right to field that candidate? And everybody is saying, since one side has done it now, let the other side do it. And I think fairness and equity demands that it should go to the south. Daudu, yeah, senior right. advocate of Nigeria and a former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, thank you so much for your time tonight. And I will sincerely uh, thank um, uh, the learned and the, <laughs> the professors in the, in the studio. Thank you so much. Thank professor Suleiman, uh, uh, Abubakar Suleiman, and Professor Julia Fuadide. Thank it's you. a pleasure having you. Thank what you. a robust and interesting conversation. Thank you. Thank you, you yeah. Three thank gentlemen. You. Thank you so much. Well, that's our show today, everyone. I, I guess you enjoyed it because I thoroughly enjoyed myself with this uh, gentleman and the conversation. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye-bye.